All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, got a little bit of a different video here today. Uh, I'll show you guys what we got. This is our new snowmobile trailer. And we're going to adjust the brakes on it. We're going to make sure that all four wheels on this tandem axle trailer are adjusted properly and that they're working properly. So before that though, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. I mean, come on back, check out what we got going on. And don't forget to smash the like button. I always appreciate that. So appreciate it guys. Let's get into it. So this is the trailer. It's a 2008 RC 25 foot by 8 foot. It's a car hauler slash sled hauler. It's all aluminum. It's got tandem axles on it and electric brakes. And um, when I got under there to check some things out, there were a couple holes in the floor there. And they're just small ones. I was going to patch them up. Well, I got under here and I noticed some broken wires. And so um, it towed home fine. I towed it about an hour home. Uh, I'd say probably three quarters of the way on the freeway. Towed great, braked fine. But I noticed that both of these axles right here, these two hubs, wires were broken. So I already got it lifted up. Um, I fixed the connections already. I went to the tr local trailer supply and got the right stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and get under there and uh, do some needed tests. I have a lovely wife assistant with me today. She's gonna help me. What I'm going to have her do is I have it set to a three and a half on the gain and then I'm going to have her press the gain switch all the way over. So I'll show you guys that real quick. Okay, so this is the setup here. This is a 2018 GMC Sierra. Uh, it's got obviously got the towing package, got a brake controller on there. Um, you got your heads up display and you have these two buttons here. This will raise and lower your gain and this will fully activate the gain on the trailer brake. Okay, so when you press the plus, it'll go up. But you can change the gain to whatever you want. You can go all the way up to 10, or you can minus it and take it all the way back. I had it set, um, I asked the seller of the trailer, he said to set it to about three to three and a half. And then when you push that lever all the way over, it will fully inactivate, or it'll, it'll fully activate the power going to the brakes with a gain of three and a half, which is just voltage output. You could press it like a quarter of the way, half, three quarter, and then full. So what I'm gonna have um, my wife do is go ahead. I be, I should be able to use this. I'm gonna sh maybe I'll have the trucks. Uh, maybe I'll start the truck and then have her do that. I will go out and spin the wheel, each wheel, and make sure that it stops the way it should. All right, so I'm just gonna head over to this first side. I know that the front left is working, or the driver's side is working. Um, it seems like it had the most wear on it, so I don't know if it's just because that was the only one that's working or what the situation is. So we're going to figure that out now. All right, so this is the front right wheel, and I will yell to her to, or I'll give her the thumbs up to go ahead and hit the brakes once I start spinning it. You can hear that it's, it seems like the brake pads are touching. That's another test is that you want to be able to hear them making some sort of contact, not enough to slow it down though. And then uh, you also want to make sure that it'll stop when the gain is pressed. Oh yeah, good deal. That, no, let go. All right, so that's good. Awesome. So now let's go to this side. Yeah, good deal. All right, do it one more time and then hold it. Yeah, good. All right, so that's easy enough. That's, uh, I was hoping I wouldn't have to test or uh, adjust those. So yeah, that's good, that's good news. I haven't, uh, I took the trailer around the block after I uh, redid the uh, connections. I'll get under there and show you the butt connectors that I use, they're straight from the trailer supply. Okay, so now we're underneath the trailer here on the same side. These were the butt connectors. I didn't actually know what these were at first, and they're really just, uh, triple butt connectors and what they do is you slide 
you can kind of see it here. You slide the um, wires in the end, freshly cut wires. Let's see if I can zoom in real quick. Okay, that's better. So they have three holes on the bottom and then these are actually out. They Before you use them, they're sticking out about a quarter of an inch, maybe a eighth of an inch, about that high right there, um, where the bottom of my finger is. And what you do is you just slide the wires in and then you pinch them down. You don't have to trim the wires or anything, just have a nice clean cut. And uh, you just cramp, crimp them down real hard and it pinches, it actually cuts through either side of the sheath and makes con makes metal contact. Uh, there's a bar that goes all the way across and it's got like these things that will go down over the wire and it'll cut through the sheath and then make contact with the wire and then it links it's the same bar and it does it for all up to three wires and makes contact with all three of them and it just butt connects all three of them and the cool thing about it they're made by 3m the cool thing is that these are each filled with um dielectric grease like completely so when you crimp this down it like squeezes out it's pretty cool so i did that with this side and that side because they were both discs there was one wire that was disconnected uh check the rest of them and they were all good to go um these are actually only like a dollar a piece so they're pretty inexpensive just checking your your local uh trailer supply you can probably find them on amazon or something uh but i did ask them what the process would be if i did need to adjust the brakes and they said that these two slots right here which fortunately i'm not even gonna bother taking these out because they're working i don't want to you know break any seal or whatever and allow whatever but uh you would pop these out right here and there's an actual tool for it, but they said you can use a flathead screwdriver and you would just screw the little um, post in. And what that does is that will separate the drum brakes because these are you know, obviously drum brakes. It'll separate the brakes and just put a little bit of tension on them. Or if they're too tight, then you would unscrew it and it just brings the two pads closer together because the pads run like on the outside like this and then also on the same side. And there's like a pivot point at the top and then when when it's activated they just get pushed apart and then that pushes against the inside of the uh brake drum there so but that's how you would adjust them right there and uh yeah obviously i don't need to adjust them they seem like they're in uh, pretty good order at this point so now we're going to go over to the other side and make sure that those are adjusted properly all right so i'm just going to use a this is an oak board i got off of a pallet just gonna put that on top of the jack here and then I'm gonna jack it up by the frame and that board will help to protect the frame in any way and this has torsion axles on it so you definitely want to make sure that you jack the trailer up by the frame and uh, not the axle at all want to make sure and always be safe and use your jack stands. Then if you got the room, just leave the jack under there and just put a little bit of tension on the bottom of it. That way it kind of disperses the load. So if the jacks fail, then if the jack stands fail, then the, the floor jack itself will catch it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do the first test on this front wheel. I believe this one's working just fine. Okay, that one's working fine. Let's test this one. Yep, good deal. Okay, that's pretty much it. I'll go ahead and give you guys a walk around of the trailer. Uh, we got the front ramp here. And by the way, um, I got these locks from Ace. They're excellent. They have this little, I mean, 
this is all okay so they have this sheath that goes over the whole thing and then these two pieces right here actually will butt up against this plastic cover that's on the lock itself and help to seal all any moisture or anything and the only reason it's busted is because i had it on my two place uh, and it was just getting rattled around and it ended up getting cut through from the clamshell but yeah these are really awesome they have this little cap that slides over the keyhole it's pretty sweet but yeah definitely that came in a two-pack as well so I'll show you the front part here I got it hooked up to the truck still so you know, we'll be able to see the lights and stuff on the inside so you got your standard ramp uh, this is five foot by like four and a half I believe and then this is about a foot long but it's pretty clean there's a 600 in there. Just a little bit of paint or something up there. But it's got a rack right here. Um, it's got the side door. And the side door... Um... Oh, I think I still got it latched. Okay, so you got the two switches here for the inside. This one controls both lights for the ceiling. So you got one in the back, one in the front. We've got a skylight here with a vent. Cranks open, you can unscrew the vent and get all this crap out of there. And then uh, each of these lights here, you can turn off individually. And then uh, we have this other light here, which is the, por the side porch light, pretty sweet. It's got latches all the way around for all the doors. So here's the porch light. And then I'll show you the rear here. This is the other one of those locks that came in the kit. All the lights work. It's got two rear floodlights as well. And this door is about seven and a half feet wide and six foot, a little over six foot long, and then another one foot uh, flipper ramp there. Um, yeah, so it's in pretty fair condition, just a little dirty on the inside, no big deal. That can all be wiped down. But uh, the owner said that he had this whole um, frame redone and beefier and had the whole, took all this off, rebuilt this whole frame and uh, it turned out pretty good. But it closes up real nice, I'll show you this, the rear floodlights. Those suckers are so bright. Don't look like it now, but when I brought it home the first night, I ended up, uh, it was nighttime when, by the time we got home, it was like five, like six o'clock. And uh, I pulled out in front of the neighbor's house, went in, cause he showed me these, turned those on, they lit up, gosh, like two houses. So I ended up using those to back it in and got it like six inches away from the canopy here. <laughs> so that's gonna be a huge help. So there's that, um, it's got uh, diamond plate all the way around. It's got these two fuel doors here. Both of those, I got the locks for everything. All the, lo the, only, all the locks work, the only one that doesn't work is the latch lock on this one, but the deadbolt works, so that's good enough. Uh, this other fuel door, and being this is a car hauler, I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen this or who has, but this, I assume, is a door to open so you can get out of whatever vehicle you bring in here. If that's not what it is, let me know in the comments section what you guys think it is or know that it is. Because my best guess is that. Because it's driver's side, makes sense. We're here in America, steering wheels are on that side. So if you guys know, let me know. And then uh, these right here are just vents. You just squeeze it and you can pull it one way. 
and they do lock in place or the other and then there's one up here and uh one down at that corner there i can only assume that's just for better airflow um so it doesn't get too hot in here i would assume so yeah that's pretty much it um everything like i said the diamond plate everything's in pretty good condition i would have had all this stuff cleaned but it's been it's been ice freezing cold since we got this thing and we haven't gotten much snow it's pretty crappy but uh I'll show you the couple holes I had to re I'll show you a couple holes I had to re So there was one right here that I didn't really even notice until after I got home. And then uh, this one here, which was pretty substantial. And most of the wood, you can see there's still some wood that's kind of uh, missing. Um, he said that, the seller said that he dropped an engine right there and it just kind of poked a hole there. And uh, he must have dropped one right there. I didn't even notice it. Um, so I went down below to take a look at them. That's when I found out that the brake wires were caught on that one side. But uh, this one right here wasn't too bad. It just had like a patch like this and then some splinters here and here. And so I just took a hammer and kind of hammered it all back up. I took, to, took away the pieces that were restricting uh, compression of the board back. And then this one right here was a little bit worse. It had like a big splinter that went this way like it went from here to here and just kind of like pushed down so i ended up cleaning up that one as best i could as well and then uh, you can see all these little burn marks here that's where i cut off screws and so what i did is i took a piece of probably wasn't the best choice but it's all i had at the moment i ended up taking some of that same oak wood from when I jacked up the trailer a minute ago, or a few minutes ago, and I cut two pieces because it was like a four foot piece. So I cut a couple pieces of those that would fit over the holes and then uh, pre-drilled uh, pilot holes and then countersunk the holes as well. And then I used stain, uh, two inch stainless steel, or two and a half inch, I think two and a quarter inch, stainless steel uh, multi-purpose countersunk wood screws. And so um, I pre-sunk, or I, I pre-drilled all those and then uh, screwed them into the wood. And then I did this all in the garage because it was like at night time and it was super cold. It's like seven o'clock at night, seven, like 15 degrees out. <laughs> so uh, after that, I ended up sticking the wood where the mating surface was facing my uh, propane heater. And I let it heat the wood up one piece at a time real good. Well, they were both sitting in front of it, but I heated one up real good. And then I took Gorilla Wood Glue and spread it all over it, back and forth, and you know, the whole perimeter, the whole nine yards. And then uh, went with a torch, and as soon as I got done doing that, I went right under the, underneath the trailer with a creeper, and then uh, my map torch, and then my drill with the right bit on it, and the, wood, the piece of wood. I took the torch and I heated up the wood real well underneath the trailer and hoping that that would heat it up and help the uh, the glue to cure as quickly as possible because when you make those two hot pieces of wood together, it will retain some sort of heat. So I did that, pushed it up under there, zinged in all the screws, uh, and they were, it was so tight that it squeezed a bunch of the glue, not a bunch, but a, you know, a good amount of the glue out of the sides where it was. And then I did the same thing with the other one and then I let it dry overnight. And then I came back out here and used my, um, four and a half inch angle grinder with a cutting wheel on there and just zinged off all the screws. And so that'll work for now. I'll probably end up uh, just taking like some sawdust or and some uh, more of that, that Gorilla wood glue and then blowing all this out. And then I'll get in there and fill all that in um, with the sawdust and, and uh, wood glue, let it dry and then sand it down. And then uh, I'll probably just sand this down a little bit more, do the same thing for there. But I do have a company called Caliber, and they make these low profile grip glides. And what they are, these are nine inches wide, and um, they'll go, they're just ski guides. So they go, just like I had on the two place snowmobile trailer. I'm sure you guys saw that. But they'll go right on the edge here, and then I'll just have it to where it goes around this one. And then I'll have a double patch right in the middle, and then some on this end. And then I'll do the same thing two spots on the trailer here and then uh, they make a product called um, Trax grippers and it's like this 16 inch wide by 22 inch long 
Um, it just kind of looks like a scaffolding type thing, and it's just a frame and uh, grip section to where the track will grip going up, and then while it's inside the, the trailer as well. And the cool thing is, is that all this stuff will obviously help to protect the floor and the ski guides, whatever. Uh, or the, 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 I guess the skags will be fine here because it's all wood. I'm gonna end up taking these these uh, anchor boards out too. But with the grips on there, one thing that I didn't like about the low profile, I think they're by Black Diamond, the ski guides that I had in the two-place snowmobile trailer, is that they didn't have any grips. So you get on there and you're slipping around trying to you know get from one one point to another inside the sled, so it sucked. So this stuff's gonna make it a lot better because you'll be able to grip with your boots because it's got the nubs, not just on the side, but it's got it on every rib of the ski guides. And the low profile makes it easy to go back and forth. So yeah, I got all that stuff coming. And then I also have um, ski tie downs by this company called Super Clamp. And they make these, they're called Super Clamp too. And it's a, uh, it's a really hard like composite plastic. And all it is is just an adjustable hook right in the middle and then you sink this hook that's got a four inch um, a four inch bolt or stud on it and then it's got a big fat washer and then a lock nut that goes through the bottom of the trailer and then you bolt it up and what happens is you pull a, you pull your sled up and you put the clamp down you hook it and then you pop this latch over and it's done you can put a little pin through the one side that's locked down no more this screw in for you know a minute and a half and I know it's only a minute and a half but you know when it's minus two out you know you want to get that crap done and over with and whatever so yeah all that stuff should be here uh like middle of next week um i don't know if i'm gonna do an install video of that or not being so cold but we'll see so yeah that's uh pretty much it i have these right here i'm not sh exactly sure what i'm gonna do with these a neighbor gave me these they're like um he got them from a buddy who was giving them from a firestone store that was tire store that was closing down something like that uh, he's had it for a while gave them to me they're really thick so i don't know if i'm gonna keep them in here or i also have plans to get um another trailer for the bikes because i don't want to hump that those bikes back up and down the back of the truck forever keep doing that so we're putting those mats in the bottom of that and it'll probably help out to uh, you know just keep the floor of that much nicer and not have to worry about oil spills or rent just anything like that so just nice grip you know the whole nine yards you guys get them so yeah that's it um yeah I'm, we're pretty happy got a great great deal on this it's a 2008 rc 25 foot by eight foot and uh all this stuff by next weekend we'll have ski guides and track grips on it and it's all going to come out over here and to where it you know matches up and yeah we'll be good to go so now we'll be able to we're probably going to end up putting some sort of foldable bench right here uh, and maybe right here or over the wheel well on that side so we can have a place to sit down you know when we're changing or whatever just come and chill out up in here i'd like to use a propane heater and take that with us and find a place to scrap that down too and then that way you know we can come inside here and heat things up before we take off for the day and uh you know hit the trails or um yeah just to warm up so yeah good things coming so praise god for all the blessings that he's given us but uh that is it for the video so i hope you guys enjoyed the video i know i kind of rambled on a little bit about um the trailer i'm pretty excited about it so uh just thanks for letting me share that with you guys and uh like i said before if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel hit the subscribe button and the alert bell that way you guys can come on back check out what we got going on like always We're fixing a ride here it's just like i said uh, that's exactly what we do and you know we like to go on trips and go riding so but uh um, yeah don't forget to smash the like button as well we always appreciate that it helps out with the channel growth and we're almost at 2,000 subscribers should be any day now so pretty excited about that might already have passed 2,000 by the time i post this so good deal all right guys you guys take care thanks for watching we'll see you guys in the next one uh, stay safe god bless